Greetings, I'm Dr. Avis Williams, the proud superintendent of NOLA Public Schools, and I am right here at Warren Easton High School with some amazing scholars and alumni. And of course, this is another episode of Voices of Future Leaders. So we're gonna get some introductions in and then we're gonna dive right into talking about social justice. So let's start here. Hi, my name is Jasmine Mitchell. I am a 10th grader and a part of the fabulous flag team with Big Sister, Little Sister, and a part of Student Council. Love it. My name is Tanya Boy Cannon. I'm a proud graduate of Warren Easton, class of 1997, educator and entertainer. My name is Jalen Chapman. I'm a part of the Warren Easton football team and track and field team, and I'm also Mr. Sophomore. My name is Clarence Foster II. I am Mr. Warren Easton. I'm a part of the football team, captain of the football team, and I'm a tall great. I am Sonny Patterson, uh, a great, great, great part of the alumni of Warren Easton, class of 1997, a poet and magician in my spare time. <laughs> nice. My name is Lean Ayad. I'm in 12th grade. I'm the student council president and the interact president at Warren Easton. Wow. So I feel like I'm like sitting here with royalty. Okay. Uh, and it's a purple is, is definitely the color, right? Um, so y'all, we have been having some amazing conversations with scholars and with people around the community uh, around social justice. And one thing that I always say to our young people is the, the, the problems that we have are not yours to solve but you absolutely deserve a seat at the table and for your voices to be heard. And that's what this is. We call it Voices of Future Leaders, but I know that you guys are leaders already, right? You're leading in the spaces that you're in right now and in our community. So let's just get started. Um, what does social justice mean to you? When you think about the term social justice, what does it mean to you? Go ahead. Okay, so first I would like to uh, describe social. Social is like the people and like the people you surround yourself around and then I would like to uh, describe justice, which is like the peace you make. So in my eyes, social justice means like the peace amongst the people. Mm. Ooh, I like that. You know, I've, I've never heard it described that way. What do you think about that? I, I love the fact that, first of all, thank you for allowing me to be a part of this platform, to sh sit here and have conversations with the future who are already here. Mm -hmm. And I love that having peace amongst community. Jalen, that was amazing. Because when we're talking about social justice, we're talking about fairness, we're yep. talking about equality. What does that look like? And oftentimes in the black and brown community, it doesn't exist. Yeah. And so to find that peace, I feel we have it amongst us. And now it's time to bring that into fruition within the world and society of what social justice should mm -hmm. be amongst us. I love everywhere. that. I love that. You know, and as, as young people, as citizens of our, our great community and citizens of the world, uh, there are a lot of issues that you can have concerns about that you can really care about. So when you think about social justice, what are some issues that really resonate with you? You know, things that you're willing to speak up for? For me personally, the, the biggest thing is not happen in the United States, but the United States is part of it. The Israel and Palestine conflict, mm. it really affects my family. I mean, I'm Palestinian mm -hmm. and I will forever rep Palestine forever. Like, mm -hmm. and the thing that bothers me the most is the propaganda. Yeah. It's the misinformation. It's when you Google it, it's like all you see is this one side and mm -hmm. this one idea rather than let's expose people to the other idea mm -hmm. because not like I don't want to say it's right because yeah, it is but like let people choose what they want to know yeah. let people mm -hmm. decide what information they want to consume rather than just feeding everything mm -hmm. and that gets to the fairness that that we just talked about you know if you want to really be fair then we have to make sure that people have access to all parts of the story yeah yeah i appreciate you lifting that up you know because when we think about social justice you know obviously we can look at what's right in front of us um but we have a whole world that's happening right now right um and, and we have to look at it from that lens as well what are some other social justice issues that you guys care about or that you are maybe working on already 
I think education, it plays a major part when it comes to um, education, mm -hmm. because speaking of the war, if we're not educating mm -hmm. on what's happening in schools, there's a lack of information, which creates a, um, a, a world of ignorance. Yep. And also there's a lack of resources from, for schools, for yeah. kids, where our kids are not being given full awareness of what is black history, what yeah. is black American music, what mm -hmm. is it to understand how this world came about. And so when it comes to education, I feel that funding mm -hmm. plays a major part in that. So mm -hmm. to, to give equal funding, fairness across yeah. the board, so all kids can learn equally. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you lifted that up because, you know, to Lean's point, you know, she wouldn't know what propaganda was if she didn't have an education, right? Um, and in order to be able to unpack what's happening around us, that education piece matters. Um, it's not just about what we're learning in school, but it's, it's being prepared for life. Yeah. What are some other thoughts that we have around social justice? Um, I would like to piggyback off of Ms. Cannon, you know, uh, with the equity in education. Mm -hmm. Not all students have, like, access to, 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 to this, like, not all students have the resources that our peers may have. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I want to say it's not, like, it's not fair in a mm -hmm. sense. And, um, just, just being open-minded about that and, making sure all kids have like the right to an education yeah. and and like everyone's being taught what they need to be taught mm -hmm. that's that that's good that's good no and you're right you know i, I look at equ equity as one of my core values and for me it's about removing barriers and providing access um, and then making sure that we're intentional about doing that for all so i appreciate you lifting that up um, you know, one of the things that when I'm talking to some of our scholars and even uh, adults and leaders in our community is about the violence. And you, you mentioned um, a war that we have on, going on in the world and we have violence within our own community that I know has to impact. So how do you view gun violence as a social justice issue? Uh, so I feel like it's a social justice issue because at the end of the day, why do our peers have the means to get these weapons mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then why why is nobody trying to stop them? Mm -hmm. like we have we have people to talk to and everything but we don't have people that actually like sit down watch us outside of school yeah you don't know us from, from the inside you don't know it from the outside mm -hmm. i would like to add something a lot of us are not like we see these video games and we think like we don't think much of a gun and like they see that they, they can respawn and Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, it's just, oh, I'll get another shot at it. But, yeah. like, it's life. Like, life, you only get one chance. Mm -hmm. And just last year, I want to say, we lost two uh, two freshmen to gun violence. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Kennedy and Tyler. That were their names. And it's sad uh, it's sad that they that they lost their lives. But, like, it's, it's vital that we bring awareness to these weapons and mm -hmm. help kids understand how dangerous a weapon is. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned a piece about um, like video games because I do think as young people, it's normal to not have the same grip on reality that I might have. You know, it's normal to think you'll live forever and that you know certain things that that um, may happen don't hurt or kill. Um, and I do think that it's a, a great opportunity for for you all as leaders already and for us to make sure that young people understand that. You know, because otherwise we're going to be dealing with the the trauma um, and and the mental health mm -hmm. issues. Um, well into your future um, and, and speaking of the mental health do you see um, mental health or trauma as part of what you're having to grapple with in our community I mean uh, not necessarily mm -hmm. for me but okay. like I hear a lot of students talk about like them like wanting to have like mental mental uh yeah, like, su like support with mm -hmm. that. And um, just, like, for them having that access, I feel like that can, that, can, that can help them out in the long run. Yeah. Just, like, having access to, like, having that access to someone. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I know what I'm trying to say, no, but it's, to, like, it's to hard to get it out. Someone to yeah, listen. Right. They just need someone to listen, like you said. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and a lot of people don't have parents at home mm -hmm. that can 
talk to them and guide them to the right direction. That's why I feel like there's a lot of crime and mm -hmm. a lot of violence because there's nobody at home to guide them and tell them this is the right thing and this is the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really feel. I want to piggyback on what both of you said because being an educator over 20 years, what I've learned is two, it's two parts to it. Children are caring so much that they don't realize what they're caring. Mm -hmm. And they don't know how to formulate or speak on what they're feeling. They just know yeah. how to act. Mm -hmm. So with that action comes a reaction. As th the respondent person on the other end receiving that reaction, we are also traumatized with having to receive and give that support when they're not getting it at home. So yeah. then as an educator, where do we go for yeah. that support? Yeah. So it's a two part because I've always advocated for having a, you know, bi-monthly round circle, round table of conversations around mental health mm -hmm. because we're coming up on the holidays yeah. and a lot of babies are experiencing trauma during yeah. the holidays. And so I really feel that the more our youth are able to speak up and say how they feel because mm -hmm. I grew up hearing children should be seen and not heard. Yeah. You know, and I had to change that narrative to be children should be seen and heard because yeah. they do have a voice. Absolutely. Children are our first teachers. They teach us how to teach them. They yeah. teach us how to love them. They teach us how to feed them. So if we can learn from them and then turn around and deposit mm -hmm. those same teachings of what we know back into them, yeah. we would have a better sense of communication, especially in the mental health field. I love that. And we can learn so much. And that's, that's what I love about doing this and when I'm visiting schools. Um, and I learn something new every time because you guys have so much to offer. Um, and shame on us as adults if we don't rely on young people to support us. Go ahead. Um, I was going to say that on top of there not being enough support, the kids also do not want to open up. Okay. It is hard to, it's easy to understand, but it's so hard to say it. It's so hard to be like, to get vulnerable and be like, mm -hmm. I need help, speak up and be like, this is an issue that I'm dealing with. And then on top of that, like, okay, the way I grew up, right? If anything was going on at home, I was told, do not talk about it mm -hmm. outside of home. Yep. Because Social Security and all, like, all mm -hmm. the people. Mm -hmm. So it's that, too. Like, kids are afraid to speak up because the, of threats. Yeah. Yes, you know, one of the things that I hope happens is that we can normalize talking about mental health, that we can normalize um, just having the conversation um, in homes, in schools, amongst friends, um, you know, and in the black community, this is a major problem, you know, that mental health is, has been stigmatized for so long um, and nobody wants to, to seem crazy, right? And, you know, that whole adage, oh, you'll be okay, you're probably just a little blue, you'll be fine. Um, so I, I want to encourage you all to express yourself, you know, be, be comfortable enough in your skin to, to express yourself and find trusting adults. Because I think uh, part of the not expressing, in addition to what might come from home, a lot of times it's just not trusting people enough um, to be vulnerable. Um, I would like to add something to that. Um, I feel like people are scared to open up, like, and speak about what's going on in their, inside, of their, inside of their heads because they're scared of what people are going to say about them. Mm. You know, people can Judging. be judgmental. Yeah. Let's look at Kanye West, for instance. He came out and he, he talked about what was wrong with him, and then mm -hmm. people are calling him crazy. Oh, he's Kanye. We want the old Kanye back. And it's mm -hmm. like, what about, like, he has feelings too. Yeah. And a lot of people tend to ignore that, and that's like, that's not, that's not right. Yeah, I completely agree. So, so when you guys, again, think about social justice, why do you think that in the world that we live in that we're still having to have some of the same fights? I was looking at the news this morning about voters' rights. Um, and y'all know I came from Selma before I was here and had a lot of activity um, a few decades ago around voting and making sure that blacks had the right to vote and we still have fights along those lines. Why do you think some social justice um, issues are successful and why do you think it is that we're still having to fight um, for certain issues? Uh, oh, oh, go oh, ahead, Lee. Clarence, go I, ahead, go. Lee. Clarence, I really got to go because history repeats itself. Mm. It will never stop repeating, especially when you're uneducated about mm. it. You will just make the same mistakes that people before us has made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we actually kind of spoke about this uh, early in the corner. Um, there's no leader. 
um, you know, we look back at the, the civil rights movement. Yeah. There was Martin Luther King who led uh, Rosa Parks, we talked about. Mm -hmm. She took a stand. Um, Malcolm X, he was kind of like on the flip side in a sense. Um, and we also looked at the LGBTQ rights. Mm -hmm. Those people have, like, they, there's leaders, people that help them, like, and advocate for them, for their people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, dang, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, are you saying that in a positive way, as if, meaning that their issues are being heard and right. in a different kind of way? Right. So, like, and we also talked about the, uh, the one that, failed, the abortion. Mm -hmm. There was no, like, there was no, like person like take willing to take charge and be ahead of that mm -hmm. of the abortion rights mm -hmm. whereas we had Martin Luther King and the the, the, the mm -hmm. people the six people that I seen over uh, fighting for the gay rights mm -hmm. so I feel like well if, they, if there was a leader that someone that took a stand and it was 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 willing to to to, to fight for well, not saying that they didn't want to fight, but like mm -hmm. someone really willing to take charge yeah yeah then and to it push it through push right. it over the finish line so mm -hmm. to speak yeah can I add on to that? So, not, like, on top of there not being a leader, the cause of that is because nobody wants to be a follower. Mm. Nobody actually wants to follow the people that are on the right path. Right. Like, nobody wants to listen. Or if, like, oh, you trying to be up and big. Like, I'm not mm -hmm. going to follow you. Like, mm -hmm. I want to do my, I want to be the leader, too. Mm -hmm. You want to be a leader. You want to be a leader, 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 leader. leader. We all <laughs> right. leaders. Nobody yeah. to there to follow. Yeah. So, I would like to That's add something really again. Go ahead. Um, we have like, um, I know like, well, I don't know, but like some people are like scared to take a stand mm -hmm. and like stand firm on what they believe in because of the backlash they may receive. Mm -hmm. And like a lot of people are not willing to take that to, to and, and push through and fight mm -hmm. for what they want. Um, uh, where was I going? Because social, I'm going to, I'm going to say like, a lot of people feel that it's not cool to lead, okay. like to be, okay. to be, to be like the person in charge. I was always told that being a leader was a lonely position. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't like to feel that loneliness. They need, they, they, they need someone to help them. Like even, let's say like when you go on a stage, my brother, my brother, he told me, Clarence, go on the stage, go on the stage. And, uh, and, and that's when Mario, this Mario and Flagboy Gears mm -hmm. was on the stage. He was like, Go there. I'm like, bro, why don't why don't you go up there? Like, you can do. If I can go on stage, you can go on stage. Right. Unless like some people are not like willing to to take to charge. Take yeah. Right. Yeah. I I love how you talk about the leadership role because leadership it is a lonely place to be, uh, a lonely space. Let me say that not mm -hmm. place to be, but a mm -hmm. space because you talked about being great leaders. Great leaders were great followers. Yeah. So they followed the right people to be great leaders. I yeah. talk about Sunny and I all the time. We're the same age, but she's my elder. If she if she says, I'm following, right? Because she shows that example. She sets mm -hmm. that example. It's great that you talked about there is a lack of leadership. And that's why we're sitting here for yeah. you all to begin to continue pushing. Because I'm inspired by you all that's just right. listening. I'm ready to go back to school. That's right. And follow your, your leadership. Our communities lack a lot of funding, transportation, when we're mm -hmm. talking about voters' rights. Because we, we know to vote, but how do we get there? Right. We know to vote, but I love the way that we're doing, a lot of educators have taken this system of teaching the younger generations how to vote and what that looks like to yeah. have that power. In real time. In real time. Yeah. They take it home mm -hmm. and teach their families, yep. right? So now what we're doing is we are we're recreating a process or system starting with babies yeah. to now educate the adults. Yeah. And so you all are our leaders. We That's follow right. you. You're, you're our teachers. So thank you. Yeah. And I, I want to give a shout out to Elon Academy. When you mentioned that, I had a flashback of a week or so ago. I was at Elon. They were having their student council elections, okay. campaign speeches, and real voting on the computer and everything. Um, and, you know, and it was a real demonstration of, of students in real time learning um, how important voting is and how important it is to pay attention to the issues and that sort of thing. So. Yeah, so um, another issue that I've, I've um, noticed um, 
in, in my eyes and in my nose is the smog that we've had, um, particularly in New Orleans East, um, but it's, it's, it's um, filtrated through other parts of the city as well. You know, when we think about social justice, we don't always think about environmental justice. Um, but we know that a lot of times um, black families, black and brown families, and people who are poor live in communities where air quality is just lacking. And that's why so many of our, our babies have asthma. Mm -hmm. um, so what are your thoughts um, in terms of the environment that we currently live in um, through the lens of social justice? Um, I, I believe that everything is a chain reaction. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to break it down. So uh, we, we've been facing, like, the, these fires and stuff, and that's because of the lack of rain. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been raining because it's been – we haven't had hurricanes. So, like, the hurricanes usually play a, play a part in, like, bringing water to, to – like, bringing rain. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, haven't, we haven't had hurricanes because of – it's been uh, – because of the heat. And it's hot because we're producing too much – we're producing, too, I, I don't know what it's called, it's, but we're producing too much of it. And it's all like a, a, a chain reaction. It's a rippling effect. And because global warming, right, global warming, uh, it's all of that. It's like it's, it's a rippling effect and it's affecting us in New Orleans because we don't want to take care of the environment. Mm. Just like stuff like simply like plastic water bottles get into the ocean and and and, and um, they do a lot of harm and. They, they kill the, the fish, uh, they pollute. The, the pollution, yeah. pollution, that's what it is. And all of that, it's like, it's a chain reaction. Yeah. So, like, we need to be more aware of what, what we're putting into our, our, our atmosphere and just try to help change. You know, it's crazy because you would think the plastic water bottles are our biggest problem. Mm -hmm. They're definitely not. It is literally the cattle that we have. They take up all the forest land. They take up all really? the grassland. Yes, yeah, that's actually the biggest cause of global warming is the cattle. Okay. I well, just want to bring that up. What about the beef? Yeah, <laughs> it's all about it's the beef. It's, all it's the, the beef. beef. It's all about the beef. I did want to. I did want to go back to the smog part. Uh, the fire is caused mm -hmm. by the people, and that's just like, and I'm really glad that you that we are talking about like environmentally this stuff because it's like nobody talks about yeah. it you know we always when you think new orleans yeah we mention a lot of subjects concerning around like gun violence and just the kids and the mental health and awareness and stuff but we never care about the environment and yeah. it's like how are you gonna get your mind right if you're not breathing the right air yeah i mean and then when you think about the future um right. it, there are lots of implications go ahead uh i just feel like like as a whole like as a whole in the community and everything else we just need to start holding each other more accountable. Mm. Like, I like that. Like for the actions that we're making, like the big manufacturers and all those other companies, mm -hmm. like the big mass productions, like y'all need to mm. understand y'all are in communities that probably can't get this fixed as fast as a, a big time city would. So like mm -hmm. y'all have to be more, have to think better, like when y'all are doing certain things. You yeah. need to think about the people that y'all affect them. Mm. Yeah, and, and that's that's a good way to look at it, too, because uh, there are reactions um, and other reactions when you talk about um, the, the choices that we make, whether it's around pollution or something else. Absolutely. So uh, as we begin to wrap up, um, I want to mention that last month was Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Um, and as young people, I know you guys have a variety of different relationships, and I think... Um, just friendships. I mean, I mean, I don't mean anything by it. <laughs> you know, f from friendships to family to um, close relationships. You know, and you know the the mantra for Domestic Violence Awareness Month um, is love should not hurt. Um, so, how do you guys view relationships? And you know, what advice do you give, or would you give a, a friend or someone who you felt was in an unhealthy relationship? Okay, I don't know too much about relationships, but what I do know is everybody is in a toxic relationship. And everybody. It's it's not now in my gener like in our generation, it's not mainly like a physically abusive, it's more mm. mentally abusive. Mm. Yeah. So I mean the advice 
it's it's no advice that I can give. Mm. Like people who are in these mentally abusive relationships in our generation, they can't escape. They yeah. leave a they leave a relationship, and then they're like, oh, where's the next toxic one mm. for me to be toxic mm. with? Yeah, <laughs> you know, and and I'm glad you mentioned the emotional piece because you know when sometimes when we think about domestic violence, we only think about physical abuse, but there's a lot of emotional and uh, mental abuse that can happen as well. Other thoughts. And I also feel as if you, um, before you get into a relationship, you should work on yourself mm. before getting with somebody else yeah. or trying to bond with somebody else. Like, it all starts with you yeah. and how you want to portray or be with this person you want to be with. I love that. I was, as you were talking, I pulled up this note I put in my, from September 6, 2022. We were on a podcast, Sonny and I, and Sonny was talking about ships. Right, she said mm. it brings something into another level. She says the essence of existence allows it to be and to ordain. And so, when we put the word ship onto something, we're giving it a certain amount of power mm -hmm. of existence. And so, I was asking Sunny, I was like, Talk about ships. <laughs> you know, this is, this is always tough when you have so much to say, and as you know, I'm, I'm compiling. What you all are mm -hmm. you're going to share it with us in a minute right yes of okay. course <laughs> what you all are speaking uh, a part of my role in this space is to create this summary piece as you are speaking so it's always tough because it's so much that mm -hmm. i want to say like oh yeah it's a bit more than cattle oh, <laughs> right? it's this, oh it's this, this you know all of these kind of yeah. things um so it's 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 something when we were talking about this aspect of a relationship or fellowship mm -hmm. even when we bring into this aspect of intimacy right and we hear this ship and the sea this the sea why yeah. right at the end of a a word but it said when ship is added right it it ordains a thing it says mm -hmm. it brings something into existence over and over again in this way and then the sea does the same thing and it's like oh well, isn't this something? Because mm -hmm. ships always belong in sea, yep. right? Yep. So we know that all of these things also pertain to water. So we know that there's going to be a big aspect of emotion, right? Yes. That plays, that plays a part in, in how our relationships run, how we move, how we connect. And certainly we know that relationships do not just mean, um, uh, you know, a love interest yeah. in this right. way. Right. Um, this kind of whimsy you know, romantic mm -hmm. thing, but it is this aspect of how I'm relating even to myself. Yep. I relate to you, to you, mm -hmm. to you, to the trees, to the wind, to all of these kind of things, which also brings us back to environment, right? Yeah. Which brings us back to this aspect of the air, which brings us back to how really can we control, quote unquote, the weather mm -hmm. in one way truly is how am I controlling myself? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. So this Close is us, you know, looking you at this aspect of environment from a very holistic kind yeah. of way so that we can understand that wherever I walk is environment mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's everything around me yeah right so I love it's, it. it's a, a beautiful piece when we're talking about the ships and the seas mm -hmm. and everything that comes I love there. it and I know Sonny you've been working diligently and I've, I've seen you in action before and amazing is an understatement <laughs> um, for what you bring um, and I'm, I'm just talking right now just stalling for like 15 to 20 more <laughs> seconds until you're ready <laughs> uh, because I know you're going to close us out in one of the most phenomenal ways well, um, we, we hope so you will I know you will I do want to thank our scholars you guys bring a, so much to the table um, I'm super proud of each and every one of you what you've already accomplished and I feel um by all means, our world is going to be in great hands yeah. under your leadership. And I mentioned this is called Voices of Future Leaders, but clearly you are our leaders right now. Yeah. Um, and and keep, keep doing that. Keep leading, believing in yourself. Um, don't be afraid to ask for help along the way because we've got you. Sunny. All right. Let's go. Let's see. Let's see what you all started. Oh, you had a lot. Let's go up there. So there's nothing like coming home, taking lemons and making lemonade, finding ourselves in one another's stories. This is the wonder of tradition, both new and old, voices that ring hot, singing and believing that children really are the future and the present, where our future leaders deserve to be heard. So what is social justice? First, let us look at the words. This is where there is peace amongst the people bringing this thought into fruition because the misinformation and propaganda is real here is where we expose people to the truth. 
We know that education plays a major part because a lack of information and a lack of resources can make for ignorant people. But this is speaking to equity in education. This is being intentional about removing barriers because there's a war going on and who's trying to stop it? When so much around us speaks to violence, this isn't a video game. We are losing our lives, losing our minds. A trauma-filled future shouldn't be. A mentally healthy world should be the reality, but babies have seen so much, have to hold the weight of the world. So here we are, ensuring our babies are both seen and heard because it's hard. And you know the old saying, what happens at home stays at home, but sometimes home is spilling over in the streets. So this is how we acknowledge the support of a trusted community. But people are afraid, afraid to speak their minds, afraid of being judged, but oh, we are here, standing in solidarity and support, praying that you can feel it. But we are here, and because history does repeat itself, because where are our leaders? Who is advocating for the disadvantage? Oh, I'm here, and I'm reminded of a quote that says, there is no one coming, God sent you. Here, we are all both leaders and followers, unafraid to take a stand, because being a leader is a lonely position. So this is space and place, inspired and held high. We are recreating a system where our youth are our teachers, demonstrating how important it is for us to use our voices, for us to vote. This is about environment and climate. It's a chain reaction where there is lack, where there is not enoughness, where this is more about wind and rain. This is really a pollution of mind and body. So what are we breathing in and what are we letting out? Do we really care about one another the way that we claim because love should not hurt? It should carry us over the troubled waters of lack. And here we are, knowing that we have all got your backs. Our backs. Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. That was absolutely incredible. And I cannot think of a better way to close out our episode of Voices of Future Leaders. Thank you so much Thank to you. each and every one of you. To our young people, I want you to know that I see you. I hear you and I love you. Yeah, I'm so super excited love and proud. You thank yeah. you, darling. Yes, yes, yes. Proud of you all. So thank you so much for tuning in to Voices of Future Leaders and see you next time. <laughs>